he got a couple of dudes in the uh, at uh, at signing day. He got the huge safety Wilson out of IMG. Got a run, uh, not a running back, a linebacker. Uh, I think he finished with like seven commits at uh, early signing period. Couple uh, guys went to the transfer portal. Uh, Diabate, I don't think played tonight. Copeland played. Valentino was like a late scratch for whatever reason. Valentino was expected to play, and then literally like minutes before kickoff, he tweets out that he doesn't. He's not going to play. Um, obviously, Bogle Bogle, who's going to Michigan State, <coughs> he didn't play tonight. Um, so there's that going forward with Billy Napier. There's a lot of holes on this team. You have to, you have to finish, you have to fix this receivers group. If you're an offensive guy, uh, no, no one's a deep threat. No one's really a threat to go down the field. Um, there's nobody, you know, if you're playing any team, you know, you're, if you're playing LSU, Georgia, A&M, uh, even Utah week one, there's no, you know, if you're a defensive group, there's no one really offensively on the outside for Florida. That really scares me. It gives me, you know, it keeps me up at night. Um, Florida's offensive line needs more depth. And, I mean, they didn't play at all. They didn't play well at all tonight. I mean, I know Emory Jones didn't play well, but there was a lot of times where he didn't even get any, you know, time to throw. A couple of times dudes were just being left unblocked and he was getting hit as he threw. Um Defensively, Diabate's in the portal. Um, I have no idea if he's going to come back or stay. I would expect him to leave. And you're left with, I think, four or five interior linebackers on the roster. You need a middle linebacker. Um, you need someone that can – you need a safety. I feel like Florida hasn't had a good safety since Keon O'Neal, which has been five, six years. Um, Kyer Elam's probably going to go to the draft. So you have Marshall on the other side. So – uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, who that other corner, going, who, will that, who that will be when they step up. Um, although one thing Napier has that McElwain, Mullen, and even you can even go back to Urban Meyer. I, I, I won't probably go that, that far back is, uh, Napier has a quarterback. So with him having his quarterback, that can fill in for a lot of holes. But the only question is, can Anthony Richardson stay healthy? Um, you know, the best avail availability, the best ability is availability. And if Anthony Richardson can't stay healthy or if he, you know, continues to run and gets these hamstring injuries and ankle issues, whatever, um, it won't matter, you know, what Florida does, if he, how good Florida is, if he's not on the field. Um, so that's a big thing Go for Florida going forward. And, he wasn't able to play tonight. He had surgery. Um, there's going to be a lot of details going forward or that, that will come out eventually um, with his story um, about him having surgery, I'm sure. Jack Miller. Yeah, Jet, uh, Jack Miller. So this is the interesting thing about Jack Miller coming to Florida that was kind of a head scratcher to me. So. By the way, this is the Gators Final Report. If you're just joining us, I'm Dylan Denmark, host of On the Mark with Denmark. Make sure you guys are subscribing to all the YouTube channels um, at The Voice of College Football. Anthony Richardson is a dual-threat quarterback, and Miller is a pocket passer. Miller, if you don't know, was from Arizona, broke a couple of records there, was a really good quarterback for Starling, goes to Ohio State, um, and decided he was going to transfer just like Quinn Ewers did. Miller being a pocket passer and Anthony Richardson being a dual threat is is not not saying that it can't work. This is the big example I use. The Ravens the other night, obviously their quarterback is Lamar Jackson. Dual threat guy, can run around. Their backup quarterback, Huntley, is nearly the same exact quarterback as Lamar Jackson. Those two guys, Miller and Anthony Richardson, are two completely different guys. So that'll be interesting to see what Florida does, especially, I know, like I said earlier, if Anthony Richardson can't stay healthy and you're running two different quarterbacks that run two completely different systems, not saying that it can't work, but um, I thought it was really odd that, you know, maybe Napier knew him, someone on the staff knew him before, um, 
you know, when he was in high school recruiting him. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, that I thought that was really that I thought that was kind of odd. Um, so that's what the quarterback situation. William says, "Why didn't we see young running backs? Why didn't we see young receivers?" Seniority shaking my head. Yeah, I wish we would have seen a lot more younger guys play tonight. I wish we would have seen Marcus Burke. Um, he got a couple of catches this season, didn't play tonight. Um, I don't think Naquan Wright could have played. I think he was hurt. I could be wrong on that. Um, the only two running backs that were playing were Malik Davis and, and Damian Pierce. And Damian Pierce only got three carries in the second half, 10 in the first, eight in the first quarter. Um, no Lingard, no Bowman. Good Lord, all the hype coming out of camp for Bowman was he was expected to take off. Never even saw the field, um, pretty much. So that, that is one thing though. So, so Napier, you have a really good running back group <clears throat> and you have your, you have a quarterback, um, you know, hopefully Bridgerton is a full go come springtime, which he should be. Um, but you know, he has a lot of holes to fix for, uh, for this upcoming season. And it's not going to be easy. You have Utah, um, and then you play your first six of seven games right home. And then, you play Tennessee and Kentucky, two teams that are on the rise. Kentucky reels in, I think, a top 20 class. Missouri finished just outside the top 10. Um, Tennessee had another decent class, and Tennessee's on the rise, especially with Heupel. Um, Hooker, the quarterback, is coming back for another season. Um, so it's not going to be easy. Um, you know, I, I would probably say right now, eight and four would be a good year for Florida next year, considering you're playing the Pac 12 champ, Utah week one. Uh, you're playing a couple of good teams in that home stretch, and then you play a gauntlet of LSU at home, bye week Georgia, and then at AM. Uh, and all those rosters are significantly better right now than Flores is. So, um, so we'll see. <clears throat> 